The concept of reduce has been so tricky by developers to understand. And I've realized that if you simplify it into two small use cases, it can become much simpler. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Now, these two use cases are sum and multiplication. We're going to start with them and you're going to see that reduce isn't that difficult to understand. So let's say you have an array of two and four. We can reduce it into a single number, which is six, and that's going to be its sum. We say reduce because you, you make a calculation from a complete array, from an entire array into a single number, and that's going to be six. So two and four, the array two and four becomes six. Let's take a look at the code behind that. So let's say we've got an array of numbers 2 and 4 and we'd like to calculate their sum. We can use reduce here. So we call numbers.reduce and reduce is a function that you can call on arrays and it takes two arguments. Callback function. This callback function will run for every single item of the array and an initial value. I don't want to talk about the initial value just yet, so for now let's always give it a value of 0. The callback function is going to be a function here, an anonymous function. And it's going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be the total and then current or current value. And to be able to visualize this, I'm going to console log an object that has the key total and has the value total. There's a shorter way to do this, so just total using the ES6 object shorthand. And let's do the same for current. And I'm going to add a couple of dashes just so we can visualize how many times will this callback run. And now let me pull up the DevTools console, go over here, clear everything, and let's make a simple change. We see the total starts at zero. This is coming from here, we'll talk about it later. And then the total is undefined. This is because I'm not returning anything from this callback. And then let's take a look at the current. We get two, and then we get four. These are the two items of the array. To calculate the sum, we're gonna return total plus current, and I'm going to be explaining this in a second. Let's clear this and save the result of reduce in a variable called sum and then console log sum. But I also want to do one thing. I want to console log over here and I'm going to say over here that the new total is and that's going to be total plus current. Let's clear, run all of this again and we have the total starts at zero. The first item of the array is two. And what we're doing here is total plus current. So what is total plus current? It's zero plus two, that's gonna give us two. Now this total, you have to set it aside and use it the next time this callback's gonna run, because this callback's gonna run for every item of the array. So the next time this callback runs, the value of total is gonna be the same as this one, so it's gonna be two. And then the current will be the second item of the array, which is four. So two plus four is gonna be six. The new total is six. However, we don't have any more items in this array, so this total is actually going to be the final result of reduce. So all of this is going to return 6. So the sum is going to be equals to 6. Now let's see the same code with, but with different values. So I'm going to say 1, 2, and then 4. It's going to give us a sum of 7. So we start from 0, we add 1 to it, the new total is 1. And then the new total is 1, and the current is going to be the second item of the array, which is 2. We add them together, that's going to give us 3, and then this is going to be the new total, and then the last item of the array is 4, we sum them together, it's going to be 7, and that's going to be the result of the reduce goal. Reduce can be used for a lot of things other than sum, but just make sure you understand the sum, then we're going to move on to multiplication, and that's going to be a great start to understand the more complicated scenarios. So what reduce is doing is that it's calling the callback function that you define for every single item of the array. But at the same time, it keeps a value. For now, I'm calling it a total. And you can add into this total. So you take the first item of the array, add it to the total. It keeps it for the next time. And then you take the second item, you add it to this total, and then so on and so forth. So let's take an example where we have an array of two and four. And we start at zero, and we want to calculate the sum. So zero, plus the first item of the array, which is 2, is going to give us 2. 
Store these two aside and now let's do the same thing but for the second item of the array. 2, that's the previous total, plus the second item of the array, 4, is gonna give us 6 and that's how we reduce the array of numbers 2 and 4 into a single number 6. So this is the code that you need to calculate the sum but we have quite some console logs so I'm gonna remove these console logs and I'm gonna change the code from using the function keyword to an arrow function with implicit return. If you've never worked with arrow functions or implicit return, then you don't have to worry about this. So I'm gonna remove all the console logs, except for the final one, for the result, and I'm gonna take away the function keyword and make it an arrow function. That's gonna give us sum seven. You can stop here, but if you want, you can also use implicit return. And then at the end, you get this beautiful code <laughs> To calculate the sum. So that's gonna be sum 7. I don't like it when this code drops so I'd rather not have implicit return but we can also do this. However looking again at it I would rather have clarity here and, and come back to having an arrow function with the return keyword and you can see this is gonna still give us the sum of 7. The reason why I start with the function keyword and then coming back to arrow function is because if you're not super familiar with the arrow function it might be a bit confusing with the parentheses, the arrows, but this all depends on you. Just use whatever you're comfortable with. Now let's talk about the initial value. Now, I've been using zero so far because we're doing a sum. And when you sum numbers, if you have to create a variable first and then give it a certain value, with sum we start with zero. So you say zero, let's say you have an array of five and three and you wanna sum them with reduce. You have to start with zero and then add five to it and then add three to the result. With multiplication, however, if you start with zero and then multiply it by five, you will get zero. Multiply it by three, you will get zero again. So that doesn't work. With multiplication, you will have to start with one. So one times five, that's gonna be five, times three, that's gonna be Fifteen. <laughs> so the starting value will depend on what you're doing in the reduce. With sum, always go with zero, and with multiplication, always go with one. If you have the wrong initial value, you will get a wrong result. And one more thing, in JavaScript, you could leave it out and then let JavaScript guess the initial value. It's very clear how it works, but I would rather not worry about this and fall into some edge case or accidental trap. So as a tip, always give an initial value and it should be all right. Now, I'm coming back to this example, and what I want to show you is how the total takes the value of the initial value over here, but only the first time. So I'm going to go back and do console log total. So I'm only going to log the total. You see, it starts with zero. What if I say over here five? So the first value of total is going to be five. So the reason for this is because we have not made any calculation yet the first time this callback runs. So we need to tell JavaScript what kind of value we will start with. And this is why we're gonna do zero. By the way, the explanations of reduce, I'm taking them from two of my courses. So you have learnprogramming.online and you have learnjavascript.online. It depends on how much experience you have. If you are completely new to coding, then learnprogramming.online is made for you because we, we take it step by step. We go through all the little details. Whereas Learn JavaScript assumes you know the basics of any programming language. So you know how to iterate over arrays, you know how to work with variables, conditions, but we do teach reduce there at a different level. So here's an example of how reduce is explained in the Learn Programming course. You can take notes, save all of these so that later on you can come back to them when you work on the challenges and even view recaps because we learn about callback and you may have forgotten what the callback function is. So you can review it, review the lesson, and then at the end you can read the recap, and then you have to try and answer it. And here's a small example where you have to fill in the blanks, so that's going to be total plus current, ta-da! And what's the initial value? Let's say this is going to be 1, incorrect, because we're doing a sum, that's going to be 0, correct. We also get a small explanation. And now you get to the code editor with a challenge where you can visualize the song and then eventually you get a challenge to do it yourself. With the Learn JavaScript course, it's a bit more of a faster pace. So we've got array reduce and we also have an entire chapter on reducing arrays of objects. So that's a bit of uh, the next level of using reduce. 
And I also have a React course, it's at react-tutorial.app and maybe by the time you're watching this video I'm gonna have my fourth course up, so make sure to check them out, they're gonna be linked in the description below. Now I'm gonna use reduce to calculate the multiplication or the product of an array of numbers. You're gonna see this is quite similar to the sum, so once you can do the sum it's a bit easy to move to the multiplication. So instead of returning the total plus the current, we're gonna return the total times the current. And that's gonna keep in the total the product of the previous value with the current value. So it's gonna multiply them together and then we're gonna get the result at the end. So this is the previous code that we have. Let's go back to two and then four and I'm gonna change the sum into product or multiplication. And instead of returning the total plus the current, I'm gonna change that to times current. Let's run it. So the total is zero, and then the current is two. That's the first atom of the array. We multiply them together and we get zero. And then four is the second atom of the array. We multiply them together and again we get zero. And the product is zero. At this point, you should realize that we have the wrong starting value. This should be one, because with with the product, with multiplication, we have to start from one. If you start with a zero, the end result will always be zero. So let me run it again, and we see the total is one, and that's the initial value, and then the current is two, that's the first item of the array. One times two is two, and then the new total is two, we multiply it by four, that's the second item of the array, and finally the new total is eight, and that's gonna be the end result, so the product is gonna be eight. Now, if we add, for example, two, two, and four, we get the product 16. So it's two times two and times four, we get 16. So once you understand how to reduce arrays of numbers and calculate their sum and their product, you can move into something a little bit more advanced and that's reducing arrays of objects. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna reduce an array of object into the sum. And this sum will be because, for example, the array has an op several objects and every object has a key with a value that is a number. So we're gonna reduce this entire array of objects into a single sum. And this sum is coming from one of these keys. So we have an array of objects. We run the callback for every object. And from every object, we take the value that we wanna sum. And at the end, we will reduce it all the way to a single number. So let's take a look at an example of how we can reduce an array of objects. And for that, I'm just gonna directly solve a challenge from Learn JavaScript Online. This is in chapter 22, reducing arrays of objects. So we've got the sample usage over here. These are some sample groups. So this is just an example object so we can understand how the tests will run the code, what the structure of the objects look like. So we call some message count and we pass with some sample groups and that's going to return 1044 and that's going to be 1014 plus 30. So as you can see we're going to reduce this array of objects. So this is one of the objects. This is the array and this is one of the objects and this is the other object. We're going to take the message count from both of these and we're going to reduce all of it into a single number. And We've got two tests over here. If I run them, they're gonna be failing. So groups is the array, so we can call reduce on it. And I'm just always gonna start with total and then current. And then we need to provide an initial value. We're doing sum, so I'm gonna go with zero. And remember that this here, you can say sum equals and then return sum. But also you can just immediately return it. So I'm gonna return it. And now I'm gonna console log the total and I'm gonna console log the current and let's add in a couple of dash dash dash. So we see the total is zero and the current is this object. But I need to get to the message count so I need to go into the details. So then I'm gonna do current.details. That's gonna be, yeah, this object. How do I get the message count now? I can do dot message count. And that's gonna give me, if I clear and run again, it's gonna give me zero, that's the total, and the current, that's the first one, that's the second total because I'm not returning anything. So what do we need to return? We're gonna return the total plus this number. So I'm gonna copy this, and that's gonna give me 
1044. So that's how we were able to reduce the entire array of objects into a single number. Now if I run the test, we get the uh, confirmation that it's all correct. So as a quick recap, we go through every item of the array, we call this callback into it, and the value of total keeps track of the previous calculation that we've made here inside of the reduce. And this is the initial value. Now, the initial value does not have to be a number. It could also be an array, it could also be an object. Of course, this is gonna mess up the answer. But from my experience, I do not remember when I really had to use this. You can find a use case, but in my experience, it's often easier to use map in that case. One more thing, I've been calling this total. In a lot of documentation, you will see accumulator. And accumulator is indeed a more accurate variable name, but I think it's a bit confusing to start with a variable accumulator, with the name accumulator, because accumulator, what does it mean? So I like to start with the total, because in my explanation, I'm orienting you to think about reduce for sum and for multiplication. But the reason why accumulator makes more sense is because this is the answer that is being accumulated from one time into the second time, into the third time, every time the callback function runs, and it accumulates and at the end it becomes the answer, the answer of the reduce or the result of the reduce. So this is why you might see the term accumulator, but you can call it whatever you want as long as you understand how it works. In conclusion, array reduce does not have to be so complicated. Start with a simple use case and make sure to always use console logs as they help you visualize the callback. Don't forget to check out my courses, they're going to be linked in the description of the box below and I'll see you next time.